Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And we live and work full time in this truck camper. This is the only time we film videos is when our 50 or 60 hour work week is done. We get to go explore and I think we're going to go fishing today. Yeah, we are going to do a catch and cook rainbow trout video, which we've done a couple times in the past, but never in California. I hope. We're going to go into the wilderness with these e-bikes and see if we can find some fish. And if that happens, we'll do a catch. We're now also working with PetSmart, as <laughs> JKL, well, no, we just have a basket somehow. Uh, and we put it on the back of this bike and it's super awesome. We've got our fishing gear. We have our pump because we do have an inner tube back here. Yep. And we have uh, some collapsible rods and our drone and all of our camera gear. E-bike helmets on. And we are ready to go. So we work pretty long hours uh, and tr still try to keep this channel going. This is not a sponsored video, this particular video anyway. You know, uh, we don't have to make it for either one of these companies, but just e-bikes in general. You know, we work long, long hours and then we live in a very small, tight space. So very is, small. <laughs> I can't explain to you how nice it is to be able to do something that otherwise, maybe if you're tired after working a long week, you probably wouldn't do otherwise. I probably wouldn't want to do a 12 mile hike on a Saturday after working, you know, multiple overtime weeks in a row. Yeah. But these e-bikes just allow you to hop on and hit, hit that 10 or 15 mile mark without really too much sweat. Um, it's just, uh, I'm a giant convert. As you see in the background, we have a CRF 300L and a scooter, a gas powered uh, Suzuki Bergman scooter. And the last several videos have been on these because they can take you to places that those things aren't allowed to go. Now I'm gonna continue enjoying this bicycle on this 90 degree day as we go hunt for rainbow trout. All right, so we just went down this very narrow, very rocky, washed out path, trying to get down to the river. And I'm a lot slower and I had to put up the camera. And then all of a sudden, I just roll up in the bike with all the gear is parked and Chris is nowhere to be found. I walked ahead about 10 minutes, couldn't see him. So I guess I'll just grab the gear and go down. I think he just went ahead to investigate, but didn't know how long the walk was gonna be. So he'll have to walk all the way back up or I can just bring stuff down. So I guess I'll be the pack mule today. Okay, two backpacks, a bag, two fishing poles, and we're off to try to see where he went. I assume he went down towards the water, but I have absolutely no idea. So we actually had to stop riding down this trail because there were heavy rains in this area early on in the spring, and it completely wiped out this whole trail. So now it's just rutted giant rocks. So I'll, I'll show you, there's no way the bicycle would be loving any of this. All right, they found me. I'm here. Uh, what I got sidetracked looking for fish. You know, sometimes you've never been somewhere before. We'll park the e-bikes or just one of us will walk down and, and look at it. And of course we have no communications because you know that's how we roll. And there's no cell phone service where we're at or within probably 50 miles of here. So the road we wanted to cross to continue exploring is uh, no more. It's a, it's a canyon that has been wiped away. I don't know how long this bridge has been gone. Uh, that's not updated anywhere online and um, we don't really know anybody around here, so we didn't know. But the neat thing is, is that below this washed out area is that there's some massive signal crayfish eating a dead fish down there and some, some turtles way up here. And I'm gonna see if I can somehow grab some of those crayfish, maybe not. If not, we would love to make a, a ramen bowl just like we did in Guam, uh, spear and shrimp, but oh, instead crayfish. doing it with these big signal crayfish. So these crayfish, I mean, are no joke, like this big. We've seen one so far and we've wanted to do a catch and cook, but not quite sure how to catch them yet. Check out the size of the crawdads here. I think we're going to try to do a crayfish catch and cook. We're out here figuring out if we can use a trap or how we can do this, but 
coming from North Carolina, we don't have these. And of course, we're fully prepared uh, with zero nets today for this. So Chris will be lassoing them by hand. Probably not, they're probably gonna swim away, but I at least wanna give it a shot. They're way bigger than that down there too. That's just the first one I could grab. So they can't reach all the way back behind you, I guess. Super awkward place to get out of the water. It's about 10 feet deep, eight to 10 feet deep right here. We don't have a net, so we're going straight caveman on these. <laughs> it's like a bag of water. All right. So let's... did you just pluck it? I just plucked it off the bottom. I pinned it down. I was trying to GoPro and do it and trying to do it all different ways. And it's like, I can't film and do this with two empty hands. So see if we can get a couple more. And this trout fishing might turn into ramen, <laughs> uh, crawdad ramen. I jumped in to be camera woman and it is not hot enough today to make this water feel good. It is lippy, but it's fine, it's fine. It's like an ice bath and those are like a weird fad right now. I know we made fun of expensive outdoor, outdoor gear La uh, a couple videos ago we were fishing you don't have to go this cheap <laughs> <laughs> you, you can get a net it's okay Are there a lot more down there? Yeah. I'm gonna try my hand at this. Uh, I used to pick up venomous snakes, so this can't be that different. <laughs> Except, uh, I think this will hurt more than a snake bite ever would. If they got me. Alright, geared up to look cool. <laughs> I think this one's a female. Does it got eggs? No, no eggs. These are uh, invasive though. Oh, these ones are native ones. It's not signal. They're native oh. to the Columbia River. Oh yeah, they're not native here. They're not native here, so there is no like... <laughs> not a lot of conservation you're trying to do on them. They're all invasive, but... Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. We got him. The one that was eating the trout that we saw from up above. So we've come full circle. We uh, haven't tried fishing for trout yet, but we got the crayfish that was eating a very nice sized rainbow trout. So he's going in the bag. That's it, three for each of us. We have no idea how much meat's gonna be on these, but it's really fun to go catch them. You pin them down just like a snake. Chris invented it, it's genius. Okay. Is it warmer up there in the sun? A lot warmer. Ooh, it's starting to get c c c c cold. So cool. I always look cool. Especially <laughs> when I'm being safe. It sounds like a end of a GI Joe cartoon or something. It always does. be safe. <laughs> Alright, we scrambled back out of the, the river here, the little mini gorge that we're in, and our dry bag has been uh, turned into a wet bag and is full of our crayfish. We each got a three piece of crayfish in here. But on the way back, I think we might at the end of our hike, hop back on our e-bikes and see if we can cast the rod one time and maybe add a rainbow trout to this. If not, at least we're going to have a three piece of ramen back at the camper so we'll have something to eat tonight. Just take a moment to admire how freaking pretty this area is. I mean, good golly. So this is why we had to stop the bikes where we did. I think this used to be a relatively flat trail and you can see this intense rain that California got completely rutted this. We kind of did some of it but <laughs> stopped just before the worst part. but that was better than last time. This is a really neat area that we've just stumbled upon. It's like a private beach access next to this river gorge. Uh, I've never really seen much beach next to a river, a mountainous river, so that is really cool and we will keep this in mind. But for now, 
We are on the Rainbow Trouting Scout. Ooh, 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 there he is. Oh, there it is. Nice rainbow, nice rainbow, so pretty. Look at that fish. Whoa. We thought we planned ahead on the rainbow trout catch and cook, and it seems that we both forgot the two gallon Ziploc bag to put the fish in. So we're gonna have to carry it out of this little canyon back to the crayfish bag. All right, we got it all cleaned up. Look how pretty that meat is. So pretty. So we're gonna take this back and uh, ride pretty quick on our e-bikes again because we don't have any ice. You can see we don't have a cooler. The crayfish are in there still alive. I don't really want their juices and their excrement and them picking at the fish for the next few minutes. So it's just gonna be a little warm. That's all right, cause we're gonna put it straight on the fire. A little dusty. A little dusty, but that's all right. I'm a little dusty too. We'll go straight on the fire with some season, maybe some kimchi base. And uh, we got about five or so miles to get back, maybe six or seven. Uh, hopefully we can beat the sun before it gets down and get back and fix all this stuff up at the camper. All right, so we got our trout back, went ahead and threw this beautiful little rainbow on the grill as fast as possible. It wasn't on ice for our bike ride back, so uh, it's already, it was starting to get like the, you can see the yellow jacket starting to find it. So we're just going to cook it. I'm not even going to season it. And you can see our beautiful, awesome makeshift uh, bike table where we just had an old piece of plywood and uh, put it on top of our PetSmart cart here. And it actually makes a perfect working height table. So we're just gonna cook this and then uh, on the grill, and then I'm gonna season it once we once we're done. I didn't I didn't fillet this. I'm not a good trout or salmon filleter. Uh, I I just prefer to scrape the meat off the bones. I think you get the most meat that way, especially out of these kind of fish that have a lot of a lot of bones in them. So we're just gonna cook it like this, unseasoned, and then scrape the meat out with a fork, and then add it to our dish. And then we're gonna get the crawfish right now. We currently have those over there on the ice, uh, kind of shocking them a little bit with ice before we throw them in the water to cook them. So this bad boy right here, it's, it's, it started as a, it was a joke, and then we mentioned it again. It was another joke. Haha, ha, maybe we have a Ryobi problem. Um, we were at Home Depot the other day. I saw this bad boy. There's a lot of flies here, and we seem to, it just seems to be us and the deer that are the only, and the little foxes that hang around the campground are the only things that uh, the mosquitoes have to eat. So I bought this. This is a Ryobi. Hashtag shill and Ryobi again. Uh, Ryobi bug zapper. Yeah, that's well, bad. It, it, that's it a bad a boy. Battery. The drill battery is on the bottom underneath this lip. And it has a UV light and an actual light too, if you want it. It's a bad boy. I know everybody loves the sound of like a, the, uh, an A10, the gun on an A10, the brrrrap. Like a lot of people really enjoy that sound. Um, to me, this sounds better. Tap, tap, tap. Just pop, 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 yeah, pop, it's, pop. It's the sound of murder happening. It's the most awesome <laughs> sound in the world. And the other cool thing about this, I know we're getting off subject here. It has a removable bug tray. Um, and you can see the damage that you've done. And I just, something that's very satisfying uh, to me about this. The one downside to the Ryobi Zapper is that Mona hates it. So whether we run it in the camper at night to clear out any gnats that have gotten in there, or whether we run it outside, she does this. She just, she just hangs out on the, the edge over here. If you uh, try to bribe her with treats, she still does not come close. Let's see if she wants a trout tail. I think the tail fell off. Yeah, it fell off already. She usually likes a good fish tail. So let's see. Mona, here you go. Good girl. You wanna come near the zapper? Put it by the zapper. Oh, the zapper's oh. not so scary. You want that? Oh mm. boy. 
That's not scary. That very good. Oh. And it's over. <laughs> Look, it's okay. Look. Oh, Ryobi's so nice. Nope. Why don't you like Ryobi? She likes the other teals, just not this one. You're one of them uppity Dewalt people. I won't be seen. I almost pulled over the other day. There was an F-150 that was a Ryobi truck. It was lime green with the Ryobi badges, but we were late to work and we were flying down the road and I, I wanted so bad to get a selfie with the Ryobi truck. It was bright green and said Ryobi all over the side of it. We're Ryobi people. <laughs> if you live in the back of a 2001 F-250 full time, I, I, all these other, you know, I'm not going to throw shade on these other channels, but let me get my umbrella out, if you will. They all do it as like a vacation. They all have like houses and cabins and big pieces of property to go back to and all this nonsense. Y you see all this clutter out here because we live here full time and we actually live in a truck camper. That's what Ryobi people is. People out here on the struggle train. That's who's out here using Ryobi, so. And Ryobi's there for you. They're there for you. They got something for whatever you're doing. You pumping water, we got something for you. Are you zapping bugs? Are you need just to drill a screw or cut a board? The people that live in old school truck campers like this. Hashtag Ryobi people. While the trout's cooking, these crayfish are starting to be pretty lethargic now. The ice is getting them just cold enough even though that water was already freezing. It seems to be doing a pretty good job. I think I'm gonna put a knife through the top of their uh, carapace right here to uh, get them out of their misery before we put them in a boiling pot of water. And I've already strained this water out. I don't ever use a strainer. I just offset the lid and pour out like this. Much better, much easier, one less thing to clean. Sit down. Sit. Little princess. Little princess. Good girl. We had some leftover white rice, so I went ahead and made cheap, easy white people fried rice to go along with this. We say white people fried rice. We've never been viral before, but if you follow us on Instagram, which if you don't, you should look over there because we post different stuff over there than, than just on here. It's a lot of stuff. We, we ate at a Mexican food truck on the way home from work and we didn't know what we were ordering. And um, We literally just ordered blindly. They had a series of photos. We just pointed at the thing that looked like it was easiest to look at or easiest to eat in a truck. I had no idea what it was. And the video, we just posted it at like, hey, this is what we're eating on the way home. And it did, I, it's, at this point right now, it's probably a million views on Instagram. We've never had anything hit a million views ever. I wish that would happen on YouTube because there's no click over. But anyway, the comments. We've never had so many comments. It's more comments than all of our YouTube channel of the last five years combined in about four days. And yeah. so we say plain, plain white people write rice because every couple hours we flip through the comments and it, there's a lot of racially charged stuff <laughs> about how stupid white people eat and some white people leave our culture all alone stick to your meatloaf and unseasoned chicken yeah, so we something. have a lot of hilarious hurtful and <laughs> semi-accurate comments that we've been going through so that, that's been the joke lately so we're letting you in on the joke on instagram we had a video go viral and yeah this is uh, our white people food we're stupid white people so yeah which is true but <laughs> So also, uh, we have never actually eaten crayfish. We've eaten, uh, we've, we've caught shrimp on our own yeah. and cooked them and made ramen and crabs, but we've never actually caught crayfish. We've never lived anywhere that had crayfish uh, well, that you could eat. Yeah, I was about to say, well, they're all over in North Carolina. But, but they're small, much smaller than yeah, this. Yeah, so I know that people like suck the heads out, but I don't know like what you do as far as the meat portion. We're getting ready to see. Uh, <laughs> they got some big healthy claws. I'm gonna see if there's meat in there. I think probably not much. So these are signal crayfish. They are non-native to this specific region. They're actually native to the Columbia River, but there's so much overlap with the 
series of like introductions of different crayfish throughout decades that they they don't really know when they came about um but they're not considered invasive just non-native and they're just these big fat crayfish with these white spots that Look came out that. of the claw that's out of the claw and i dropped a little piece for mona later uh because it exploded but that's <laughs> okay good claw meat for a crawdad yeah or a crayfish so that was in there mm -hmm. Ooh. if if you gave me a little chunk of that and you told me it was blue crab i'd Okay. So it's sweet? It just tastes a little sweet like crab, yeah. How'd you get like that? Meat. How'd you break that open? I have manos de hombre. So do I. Pop that off the end. Look at that. That's all tail meat. I'm not going to devein it, though. That's too much effort. That's thick. Where did that come from? That's the crab. That's out of the claw. That's very impressive. Whoa. That's out of the river. Yeah. Okay, now I definitely don't want to get pinched by that. Mm -mm. Look at all that mm -mm. muscle behind there. Ugh. You got soft hands. <laughs> In the midst of cooking this fried rice, I actually added this kimchi base. So we've used this since we lived in Guam and we add it to practically everything. It's kind of like our hot sauce equivalent. Just a little heat. It's not, it's not super hot. It's not, but, uh, yeah, it's not spicy. It's just like a good mix of like it's salty. salty. It's got yeah. a little salty, a little salty spice. Salty umami spice. Yeah. It's like a good all around sauce. But super successful day. Our first catch and cook rainbow trout in California. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time we've ever caught and eaten uh, crayfish. And this wasn't planned, which is super fun, that we yeah. just happened to stumble upon these. That was super fun and just uh, didn't have any nets or anything. But I think we're going to end it here and finish eating this and uh, watch what's behind you, which is uh, <laughs> what we do in the shadows. We, we made a splurge purchase. Um, because it was not really a splurge. It was on sale. It was. As, as we told you earlier, when we I, I splurge purchased on the Ryobi Bug Zapper, <laughs> we got our first paycheck. And uh, we haven't had a paycheck in a long time. And when we went to Walmart. the place that had yeah, Home Depot, they always had a Walmart across the street. And they yeah. had a 42-inch TV on sale. For uh, like $100. It was open box. And uh, I threw $100 at them and <laughs> snatched it out of their hands as, as fast as I could. And it... It literally just fits in here uh, with a small TV mount and like a handmade bracket. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what we're looking at real quick. What's right behind you. Uh, we love what, uh, what we do in the shadows. It's the, the vampire show. Yeah. So let me, let me show you what we're looking at and give you some perspective. Scoot. So right here is a 42 inch TV <laughs> inside of our little truck camper. But it is perfect. I mean, we have a PS5, that's what we're playing this on, and so it's perfect for gaming, and I can see it from the bed all the way up there without being obstructed, and it literally just fits. We would never have bought this had we, like, been traveling all the time. Like, if you're moving every day or a couple days, this is unnecessary. This is dumb. But if you're in one place, you might as well. Let me show you. I made a bracket for this that I'm very proud of. <laughs> Show if, you, me. <laughs> if you saw the plywood left over from our table outside on the KBO bike, there is a bracket here with metal conduit uh, brackets here, a piece of plywood, and then it just goes down and it's just gravity holding this thing in here. This is our roof support system. And then that is our, that's how it's mounted. It can, those two uh, wing nuts, you unscrew those and this thing comes right out. You can see it from all angles of these this tiny camper outside yeah you can see it outside from here it's a soft-sided truck camper so you can see it everywhere <laughs> but nobody's around us so we're in this campground alone yeah. a little, so. little behind the scenes of what we watch every morning while we get ready for work <laughs> well that's it for today so thank you so much for joining us thank you to everybody that donates both on youtube patreon and paypal it helps go towards these efforts of making these videos on our tiny little short days off so have a good one